नमस्कार दोस्तों मैं शिवानंद उपाध्याय आपका स्वागत करता हूं हमारे यूट्यूब चैनल केमिस्ट्री एकेडमी फॉर आई टी जेई एंड नीट दिस इज अवर प्रॉब्लम सीरीज फॉर जेई एडवांस वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द थ्योरी थ्रू प्रॉब्लम्स होप दिस विल बी यूजफुल फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू आई विल रिक्वेस्ट यू टू लाइक एंड सब्सक्राइब अवर चैनल थर्ड क्वेश्चन करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट रिगार्डिंग थ्री पी वाई ऑर्बिटल इज आर सो दे आर टॉकिंग अबाउट ऑर्बिटल एंड द ऑर्बिटल इज थ्री पी वाई फॉर दिस थ्री पी वाई वी कैन से दैट द प्रिंसिपल क्वांटम नंबर इज इक्वल टू थ्री दूमिथल क्वांटम नंबर इज इक्वल टू वन एंड फॉर थ्री पी वाई द मैग्नेटिक क्वांटम नंबर मे बी प्लस माइनस वन सो एंगुलर पार्ट ऑफ द वे फंक्शन फॉर दिस थ्री पी वाई इफ वी आर सेंग दैट दिस इज एन ऑर्बिटल द ऑर्बिटल इज रिप्रेजेंटेड बाई थ्री क्वांटम नंबर प्रिंसिपल क्वांटम नंबर एजुमिथल क्वांटम नंबर एंड मैग्नेटिक क्वांटम नंबर सो दिस ऑर्बिटल कैन बी सब डिवाइडेड इन टू टू पार्ट वन इज नोन एज रेडियल वेव फंक्शन राइट सो रेडियल पार्ट ऑफ दिस वेव फंक्शन विच डिपेंड्स ऑन ऑनली प्रिंसिपल एंड एजुमिथल क्वांटम नंबर and there is an angular part in this angular part there are two parts two angles one is theta and the other is phi so this theta will depend on two quantum numbers that is l azimuthal quantum number and magnitude of magnetic quantum number and this phi will depend on magnetic quantum number ml ml or m whatever you can write okay so this is radial wave function and this is angular wave function and this is very important they can ask because this is given in ncert so now we'll discuss about this theta and phi when we are discussing about theta there is no fixed direction of an atom but when a magnetic field is applied then the direction of magnetic field is the direction of z axis right so z axis is not fixed in an atom when it is present in absence of magnetic field but when we apply magnetic field then z axis is the direction of the magnetic field now we are discussing here theta so suppose this is the nucleus and electron is present at a position vector r so this is the position vector r of the electron from the nucleus and this position vector is making an angle theta with the z axis and the cartesian coordinates of this electron with respect to the nucleus is x y and z so we want to write that what is the relation between the cartesian coordinates and polar coordinates so theta we see what is the value of theta the range of theta can vary from 0 to pi this can vary from here it is 0 and now when we reach here it is pi right so the range of theta will vary from 0 to pi again if we are discussing what is phi right so we are discussing that this is the z axis and with respect to z axis this is the nucleus this is the position vector this position vector is r and the cartesian coordinates of the electron is x y and z this is the theta which the position vector is making with the z axis so if i take projection because if you see here this is the vector if i take the component of this vector along the z axis right so that will be the z component so i can write that z is equal to r cos theta and if i take the projection of this vector on xy plane so this will be the xy plane i am taking the projection of it so this is the y axis and this will be the this is the x axis if i am taking the projection so one component of this vector is r cos theta the other component along this this projection is equal to r sin theta because this whole angle will be 90 degree if this is theta this is 90 minus theta so r cos 90 minus theta is r sin theta now from x axis if we take an angle of this projection vector making from x axis that is denoted by phi so always keep in mind that this phi is angle from x axis right so this is phi then this angle is 90 minus phi so if i write that what is the x component so that is equal to r sin theta cos phi and the y coordinate that can be written as r sin theta sin phi so this is the relation between cartesian coordinates x y z and polar coordinates r theta now here uh, if we solve the first option the first option is angular part of wave function is independent of angle theta and phi we are discussing about 2py for 2py right we can see that for y it is dependent on theta as well as phi so they are asking the correct statement so the first statement seems to be a statement seems to be wrong now 
the number of maxima in 4 pi r square capital r square which is radial distribution function versus r curve is 2 when we draw this graph that is 4 pi r square radial distribution function versus r we know that for all s p and d it will start from origin at origin it will be zero because next to the origin, this r value is very small. So 4 pi r s square will be zero. And because of that, for s orbital, it will be zero. Already for p and d, the value of r square is zero at nucleus, right? But for s orbital, 4 pi r square will be zero at nucleus. That's why it, it will start from origin for any orbital. Now, number of radial nodes we have calculated. If we calculate number of radial nodes for 3P, radial node formula, we already know that radial node is equal to N minus L minus 1. So the value of N is equal to 3, L is equal to 1 for P orbital. So now it is coming 1. So one radial node is there. So it will start from here and it never be negative. Either it will be 0 or positive, right? Because it is representing the probability of finding electron in a volume element, right? So now if I further simplify it, there is only one radial node. So it, it would be like this. So number of maxima is one and two, right? So the second statement seems to be correct that number of maxima in radial distribution function versus radial curve is equal to two. The C option is XZ plane is the nodal plane. So if we draw this XZ plane, suppose if I'm saying that this is the Y axis, this is y axis and now p orbital which we are going to draw here is 3py and already we know that in 3py there is a radial node so if we draw it properly there is a spherical shell right this in this shell the probability of finding electron will be zero it is a complete shell but in this orbital only this part is coming right and we can now say that probability of finding electron here will be there in this portion electrons are there but in this part, radial or spherical shell, there is no probability of finding electrons. So that is representing a spherical node or radial node. So we have already calculated that radial node in 3P, Y is equal to 1. Now we are discussing about YZ plane is a nodal plane. All the nodal planes will pass through the nucleus, right? And all the radial nodes will be away from the nucleus. So you can see here that if this is the X axis, so we can say that XZ is a plane, right? It is perpendicular to the plane of paper XZ plane, right? Which uh, where the probability of finding electron is zero and it is passing through the nucleus. So the C statement seems to be correct. YZ plane is the nodal plane. Now the D option magnetic quantum number must be minus one. We have discussed that the principal quantum number is three, azimuthal quantum number is one, but magnetic quantum number may be plus minus one. So must be one is a wrong. If it is written here may, then it will be correct, right? So this option, D option is wrong. So we can say that the answer will be B and C. Now this is the fourth question. A real hydrogen wave function for a particular orbital is given below. So this is the wave function. You can see that this wave function has radial part as well as angular part. The variable rho is equal to r by a naught where a naught is the Bohr's radius. We know the value of Bohr's radius 0 0.5 to 9 angstrom. Which of the following is are correct? So before solving the question, we should know about any wave function for complete wave function or real wave function for hydrogen-like system. It depends on three quantum numbers, principal quantum number, azimuthal quantum number, and magnetic quantum number. So here, if we discuss the radial part, which depends on two quantum numbers, principal quantum number and azimuthal quantum number for any suborbit. If we know about the principal and azimuthal quantum number, we know about the suborbit. For any suborbit, the general formula is some constant which will vary from one suborbit to another suborbit, r to the power l, polynomial of degree n minus l minus 1. It means that these are the non-zero roots. The number of non-zero roots is n minus l minus 1. When we are discussing about radial nodes, basically radial nodes are non-zero roots. So the value of non-zero roots is equal to n minus l minus 1. Then there is an exponentially decaying 
part minus R divided by K dash. Again, the value of K dash will vary from one suborbit to another suborbit. So this is the variation of radial wave function. With the help of radial wave function, if I compare here, rho to the power 2 is there and the value of rho is R by A naught. So here R to the power 2 is there. So from there, I can say that for this orbital, the value of L is equal to 2. And if I put psi is equal to 0, I am getting R square is equal to 0 means R is equal to 0 means there is no non-zero roots of this equation. It means that the number of radial nodes means n minus l minus 1 is equal to 0. So from here, if we put the value of l is equal to 2, we are getting n is equal to 3. Now, if I know n is equal to 3 and l is equal to 2, I can say that this is the suborbit. 3D is the suborbit, but in this 3D suborbit, there are 5 orbitals. So in order to know which type of orbital it is, we have to dependent on uh, angular wave function, right? So about this angular wave function, you can see that angles are given sine square theta and sine 2 phi. And there are two options here. One orbital is 3D x y. So already we know that for x, if we write the relation between Cartesian coordinates and polar coordinates, r cos theta is z, right? So r sine theta and uh, cos phi. This is for x coordinate. Right And why we have written that that is equal to r sine theta sine phi. So if I am writing x into y, it means that x into y for x into y sine square theta will come and it will be cos phi sine phi. If I multiply and divide by 2, I can write that this is 2 sine phi cos phi, which is sine 2 phi, right? So if I simplify I can write this is sine square theta, right? So this x, y is related to sine square theta and sine 2 phi, right? So if we discuss about d x square y square, if we want to know about x square y square, we can write that x square means sine square theta cos square phi and minus y square means sine square theta sine square phi. So if I take sine square theta common, we can write that this is cos square phi minus sin square phi. So we know that cos square phi minus sin square phi is related to cos 2 phi. So definitely if we go through the answers, the number of radial nodes is 0. That is correct. Radial nodes is equal to 0. The number of angular nodes is equal to 2. That is also correct. How we are saying that angular nodes is equal to 2. This is number of angular nodes or planar nodes, right? For this particular orbital, you can see that we are saying that this is dxy, right? So the shape of this orbital is double dumbbell. So we can say that yz plane and xz plane is the nodal plane. So planar nodes are there in this particular case. So angular nodes is equal to 2. The orbital is 3d xy. We have proved that this is 3d xy. So this is 3d xy and the orbital is this is wrong. 